I started on piano. My parents gave me piano lessons when I was four or five. I learned a bit, but I could play by ear, so um, my reading wasn't very good. But, but I mean, as far as piano goes, there's there's a point where uh, you know it's not cool to play piano anymore. So my neighbor, who used to come um, babysit us, he had a guitar. I was completely blown away, and he was playing some like 70s, early 80s Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, which is really guitar heavy, which I thought was like the coolest thing ever. So I bugged my parents, and they bought me a guitar for my 11th birthday. I got hip to power chords. That was fun to play. And I realized you could move that shape everywhere, so I started playing all kinds of stuff. And, and I learned mostly by ear, and I got into Led Zeppelin, and I basically lifted almost everything Jimmy Page ever did, so. It was a lot of like guitar oriented music, like nothing really that current until the 90s when guitar was actually cool again. Guitar was a sport in the 80s, right? It was like who played the fastest and who had the best hair. And I was still listening to stuff from the 70s in the 80s and then Nirvana came out and that was like, oh shit, this is awesome. I met my wife in high school. She was in our music class. She was like way hipper than me because she was into like Thelonious Monk and John Coltrane and all this weird music that I didn't understand. And I was listening to the Chili Peppers and, and Pearl Jam. And she gave me these tapes of like Thelonious Monk and I was like, I didn't get it. I was like, what the hell is this, man? And then I heard Oscar Peterson, and that's what kind of made me get into jazz a bit. So I heard an Oscar thing on the radio, and I was totally blown away. And I went out and bought the album. And, uh, and then my teacher, I just said, look, man, I want to learn to play some jazz, because this is awesome stuff. <laughs> I got into that, and then I thought, I, I'm really, I was fascinated by the, the, the improvisation of it, and how, you know, it seemed like these guys could make something out of nothing, so. I thought, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I want to play, so. When I found out about guitar, it was all I did. I stopped playing hockey, I stopped sports, I, st I like, I didn't understand girls, it was just like, but I was obsessed with it, so I didn't, my school stuff like sort of went downhill, and uh, I went to the guidance counselor, who's my friend's mom actually, and she said, so what do you want to do after high school? And I said, university? And she said, not with these marks. And I said, okay, how about college for music? She said, perfect. My son's going there. I got accepted to Humber, but I ended up going to Mohawk. I'm not sure why. And then that was awesome because all I did was play and listen to and talk about jazz for three years, like there was nothing else. Goldstein, my first teacher, was amazing at, uh, first of all, 
making me feel like a complete imbecile on my first lesson. I thought I should quit and become an accountant. But second of all, like showing me just the nuts and bolts, like just like simple meat and potatoes things, the inside of these chord changes, which I've never thought of before. These are very intimidating changes sometimes. But if you boil them down to their essential elements, you know, a jazz blues is this. These two notes going like that, right? Da, 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 da. If you map out thirds and sevenths, which is the two notes that give you the chord. That's all it is. If you add the roots, it starts to make a little more sense. But they're not moving far. That kind of stuff. Cool. A boy from Tennessee. I found out who Lenny Bro was, so that was huge, because I had never heard anybody play like that. And he was just this little kid. I think he was maybe 13, 14, I don't know. But he was playing like Chad Atkins with that whole... Uh, that thing, right? So he was like a sort of a child prodigy at, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and then he got into jazz, so he started to apply that thing, that uh, technique, to jazz playing. The harmonics that, that I really got, you know, that really got me, because he did these harp harmonics where he would he would combine natural notes with these harm, harmonics on the guitar and create these really beautiful sounds. had amazing technique and he was an amazingly individual uh, talent and creative guy. So that was the first guy and I, or one of the guys and the other one was John Schofield. I knew who John Schofield was but when I f heard the first John Schofield album with Medeski, Martin and Wood then I thought okay that's cool. <laughs> I'm kind of coming from. It's like, I love jazz, but I grew up listening to rock, and I love funk music, and this had all of it, you know? He was like the guy that said, hey, it's okay to like show your roots, right? Because up until then, I've been told, you can't play that lick on this tune, because that's whatever. And he was doing it. He was like putting all these things together, and he still had his own sound, which is awesome. Is he, he uses a lot of neat little dissonant chords like and He used to use this sound a lot, sound like a Leslie 
So you had a chorus pedal dialed as you know as fast as it could go. Like stuff like that, right? Kind of like dirty, rockish, but when he soloed on it, it was like he could he went into outer space sometimes. So I thought, yeah, that's that's cool. That's what I want to do. I want to be more like that. Just to have that same freedom that you have in the jazz uh, world, but not so narrow-minded that you can't bring your own influences into it. Bill Frizzell, Pat Metheny. The last guy that really made me listen to music again was uh, Wayne Krantz. He's an amazing guy. Even more rock oriented than Schofield and those guys. Their songs were all based on like the like gate bar phrases and cues, right? They would just cue each other to the next section. They had tempo changes, which were never outlined as far as beats per minute. It would be like, Wayne wanted a new tempo, so before the end of that section, he'd just say down. But yeah, just fearless sort of improvising with that group. I like that a lot. I like country gigs. Country gigs are fun if you're, if you're a guitar player. I wouldn't want to be a bass player on a country gig, but you know, you get to do all that fun. Chicken picking stuff. Right? Bah. I'll try and pretend you're a uh, lap steel. <laughs> when I was a kid. Loved KISS. And I even saw KISS a couple times as an adult, which is a very funny experience. And nobody puts on a better show than KISS does. Um, but now that I'm older, I'm not into the show. I don't, I don't get the show. I just want to hear the music, right? The show stuff seems um, fake or something. You know, um, music videos and, and now, I mean, it's totally different with the, the internet and, and YouTube and all that, so. There's a good quote I used to have posted on my wall by Elvin Jones that said something about um, honesty is, is what makes music good. The style of music has little to do with it, he said. It's honesty that makes it beautiful. So I think anything that's done honestly can be effective or affect the listener, right? Even if you don't understand or don't even like the music, if it's done honestly, people will, will tend to at least acknowledge it. Part of 
playing is is expending energy. So, yeah, I like I like people to respond in some way or or give some of that energy back, even if it's bad, even if they hate it. I don't care as long as they do something. If they tell me I stink, that's fine. But at least they listened. I, I want to be respected as a musician and. I'd like to think that sometimes when I play, it can help people. It can affect them in a positive way.